In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the EWWW image optimizer, how to set it up properly, how to set the settings that I use on my own sites, my client sites when we use this plugin, and we're going to start rocking and rolling right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe then hit the bell notification icon so YouTube actually tells you when I publish new stuff. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and start learning some stuff. I'll see you there. The first thing we want to do is install the plugin. So let's go to plugins and then add new, and then type in EWWW, search for that, that should bring it up. And it's this first one right here, EWWW Image Optimizer. The second one for the cloud, this is a much lighter weight version that's required for certain hosts like WP Engine. WP Engine requires that you use the cloud version, which moves the processing of the image compression off of your server and onto EWWW server. You can do the same thing on your site if you wish to, but you do have to purchase an API license key. So that's the only difference between these two. One does the work on your server and one does the work off of your server. We're gonna install this first one, the one that does work on our server. It's compatible with the latest version, 500,000 installs, a lot of great reviews, so it's a good solid plugin. I'm gonna click on install now. If you're worried about your site, you should back it up just in case something goes sideways when this plugin is installed. I'm not worried on this one because it's a demo site, but you should always back stuff up whenever you get the chance. So now our plugin is activated. If we head over to settings, we now have E3W's image optimizer. I'm gonna click on that link to load the plugin settings. So on this page, you may actually have some errors on here, which would not be great. But in order to have those errors dealt with, you'd have to contact the plugin support because there's many different things that can go wrong depending on your server settings. But hopefully, I'm on a regular shared hosting by InMotion here, and all the settings are good. So most shared hosting should be okay, but it's when you get into the managed hosting or super discount hosting where some of these settings may not be turned on on the server side and you may need some support from the plugin developer or from your host to get it working properly. This message at the very top is saying you can opt in to receive 500 free image credits, which sounds like it's implying you need to pay money if you don't do this. That's not actually the case. The 500 free image credits is for access to the API key that I mentioned earlier that you could use on the cloud version, for example. And having the API key also opens a couple other options that we're gonna see in just a minute but it's definitely not required. But you can opt in to share tracking data with the developer so you can improve the plugin and he gives you 500 free image credits for that. So if we go down here to the plugin status, we see the different types of image compression are enabled on the server. So I'm using InMotion again, so by default, we can compress JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs. The exec is enabled, which is required for the plugin. Our graphic libraries, we only need one of these for it to work. GD is installed. Gmagic is missing. Image, ick, image, ick, image, iMagic, <laughs> however you pronounce this, is missing. And we don't need those two. We only need one of them. So that's good. And this one down here, which is not really that, not really required, just helps with faster uploads, is disabled. So if you opt in up here for the 500 image credits, you get an email with an API key. You could put your API key in here, or if you already know you want an API key, you can purchase one by clicking on this link here. Again, not required, just if you want to do that. Debugging, of course, is if something goes wrong, it gives you more information about what went wrong that you can share either with plugin support, or if you're a little more advanced, possibly fix the issue yourself. Remove metadata, this is checked by default. This means it will remove any other data in the image. For example, when you take an image on your smartphone these days, if you have location services turned on, and even if you don't sometimes, when the image is taken, it actually puts your latitude and longitude into the image metadata so that when you upload it to your photo sharing program, it can actually drop a little pin in the exact spot that image was taken. Now, if you want that removed, keep this checked. The image data is also important if you are a photographer or have a site where you want to protect your images. You can add your name, your copyright information, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can add in the image metadata, but it all takes up space. So if you don't need it, remove it. If you do need it, uncheck this box. Now here's where we get into the extra settings 
with the API key. We have our compression or optimization levels here. By default, we have lossless compression of every image type, JPEG, PNG, GIF. If we click on any of these dropdowns, we'll see some of the options are grayed out with a star after them. And it says right here, anything that's starred requires an active API key. So you don't need the API to compress your images, but if you do have the API, you have a bunch of different options. Lossy compression, it sounds bad, but it's actually really, really good. If you go to mini JPEG, I believe it is. Yeah, if you go to mini J JPEG, you can see what lossy compression looks like. So here we have the original. On the right hand side, we have the mini and it looks pretty much the same. And down below, we can see the file sizes. The original is 18 megabytes and the mini is 2.8 megabytes. That's for JPEGs. And if we head over to tinypng.com, these are both linked to in the description down below. You can actually upload your image and then see what the different types of compression look like, lossy versus not lossy. And what you'll notice is the file size changes a lot, but the file quality barely changes at all. So these options that are grayed out, although not required, can drop your image size even further without losing quality. And we have options. We can actually choose the lossy one for PNG in the, in the free version. And for the GIFs, it's only the lossless option. There's a PDF optimization option as well. That's API only. And whenever you're ready, when you have the settings you want under the basic settings, click on save changes. And now when you upload an image to your media library, it's going to be compressed automatically. And if we head over to the advanced settings, these are settings that you don't actually need to change, but you can if you want to. They're all described quite well in the description, so I'm not going to bore you by going through and reading them all to you. So just read through them. If you feel those options are required, then select those options. But again, if you have the basic settings, that's all you need. Also resize settings. So you can define exactly what sizes you want to resize to. By default, WordPress creates a bunch of different versions of an image, which are over here. And you can disable the creation of them and disable optimization of them, depending on what your needs are. But whenever you upload an image to the media library, WordPress creates all of these just for different reasons, different themes, use different image sizes and so on. And you have more fine tuned control over what WordPress creates. Conversion settings. These are again, very well described and you don't have to change anything here. If you don't want to worry about this stuff, don't worry about it. You don't have to change anything. The WebP settings. This is for compression inside the media library, which is all your compression and more advanced settings that you don't need to change if you don't want to. And if we head over to the media library, we'll notice a bulk optimize link down below. This is for optimizing images that already exist in your media library. It says here, previously optimized images will be skipped. You can force re-optimize them if you want to. You can add a delay in between image compression because this does use your server. So the more images you're compressing and the faster you're doing it, the more load on your server and possibly the slower your website will become until the image compression is complete. We only have 31 images, so those would be really quick. Don't really have to worry about a delay, but you can put it in there anyway, even for small image numbers. And if we click on this button, we scan for unoptimized images. I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And we actually have 251 images that are ready to be optimized. And why are there so many images? That's going to be because of the different sizes that we spoke about earlier. Uh, it doesn't actually say it specifically, but it's because WordPress creates the different sizes of every image type. And if you're ready to start optimizing, just click on start optimizing. And that is how you use the eWWW plugin. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you're actually notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, Click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side to get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.